Hello, and welcome back to part five of uh, Fit Cars Sonic Unleashed. Let's play part five. With me, I have... Oh, God, where's Discord? I have the real FTA. Hello. We have um, Vape Enlisted. Oh, That's good. stank. We kicked Steven out for someone who doesn't like art. We have MBM with us. <laughs> I, just, I came to talk about boosting. And we have super special uh, patron power hour mega super duper floor power guest action with us. Say hello, sir. Hello, hello. He said it twice. He's really good. Hey. So the last time we recorded um, audio commentary for the Sonic and Leash Let's Play was uh, two days ago. So we remember everything we talked about back then. And if there's any trailing conversation we forgot, it's totally on purpose. I'm going to get things right off. I actually really like... <laughs> uh, I I actually that that bit aside, I actually really like like this cutscene because it's the first time you know, all the jokes about Amy being <laughs> oh. all the jokes about Amy you know being blind and dumb the first time she doesn't recognize him and you can see it, it actually upsets Sonic, which yeah. I think is a pretty decent character moment. I like that. It's good. I like when Sonic's allowed to feel things. And Chip's trying to convince Sonic that this ship runs on happy faces. No, but Sonic's not allowed to cry. Yes. Don't you remember what? <laughs> don't you remember what Sega said? This isn't the Archie comic. He can cry in the games. I thought the reason Sonic couldn't cry is because he had his tear duct surgically removed. Thanks, Ken no. Penders. No, that was me. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Easy mistake. Oh, how how was that? Like, d does it hurt or? Well, I wanted to cry in pain, but, you know. Uh, see, it, now you yeah. just... See, I'm always so used to crying in Spanish that it's like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> crying in Spanish and sobbing mathematically. Those are the <laughs> best ways to cry. They're pretty good. So, special guest action. I would like to know your experience with the hashtag art version of Sonic Unleashed. Please tell me everything you know. Ah, so you mean by art the HD version, right? Yes, exactly. Oh, There's no good version. Oh, oh, oh. You gave let him money, talk so here. I'll let, so I'll let oh, you I'm, live. Go, go. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, the, the Wii and PS2 versions, they're all right. But I do have a special uh, respect for the HD versions because, in my opinion, uh, you know, given all of the HD versions flaws, yes, the Werehog could be better. But in terms of the daytime levels, uh, I know this is a very common... Um, a very common praise level towards the game, but I really, really love the sense of speed that this game gives you, and I don't think that sense of speed has been matched in many other uh, modern 3D Sonic games since. You clearly never played Lost World. Yeah, that's probably one of the fastest games, right? Lost World? Yeah, but... Is yeah. it? But then yeah, you gotta totally. like, do like the You're parkour, really and then you gotta like spin around, and you know, like not fuck up, and then... I don't know, it's... You have to go pretty fast to get through desert ruins. Uh oh. Why is it next yeah, to the cake yeah, go level? Back, go back to the go back to yeah, the tornado. Let's, do, let's, let's play that banger again. Yeah, I've been itching for that. Fuck you, bike. You how you how you how did you like, lose? How did you lose the level? You ever look at footage you recorded like three years ago and go, I don't really. What was it? Huh? What was I doing? <laughs> Yeah. Who darn played this oh, video game? Oh, oh, here's oh. the stage. I was like, oh, you're looking for you're looking for medals. That's why. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> that makes me sound. It's hey. Wolf Top One. You do have to get a heck of a lot of medals just to complete the game, Don't. which is definitely one of the weaker points. Don't worry, Chris. We can have them completely believing that you're a routing genius. <laughs> Are you a speedrunner, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I'm going for an uh, all records route, no other collectibles. Yeah, dude, like I've like high fived and chest bumped with Chris at GDQs all the time. It's just like a speedrunner thing. That's why they had to tone down, you know, all the fun and stuff you hear about because <laughs> me and Nimbian were just living it up too much. Yeah, they had to take away all the fun. So Chris, he's talking to you, Chris. I heard so Chris, and then I heard a cutout, and I said, I will wait for this to play out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I heard somebody else talking, and I was like, oh, wait, so Chris, uh, never mind, I'll wait for this other person to talk. Wait. I was just going <laughs> to... You go, I'm sorry, you go. 
Oh god, <laughs> so I can't tell if it's like it's too polite, bro. You're the guest here. You, you talk over us. Exactly. Chris, Chris will just remove everyone else. If you have okay. any any thought, you just say it. Any thought, as long as it's not like terrible, and that's up to my discretion. We we will censor you. Hydrosity. <gasps> oh, okay, okay, okay. I got I'm, I'm fighting the urge between he gave us money and I fucking hate him now. I'm fighting the urge. What do I do? We'll, 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 we'll refund but you it. don't. Fine. But you don't hate me as much as I hate myself. <laughs> Relatable. Do you, do you need a hug, bro? Maybe. Did you just explode? So to, to, dutifully to, cleaning out this area. I'm so happy with myself. To to provide some context for when we recorded okay. this, I just saw Avengers Endgame, and it was very very brave of Marvel to literally kill Captain America with a with with ice cream. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't do it sooner, honestly. I mean, the the whole thing is laid on the series that he's lactose intolerant. I mean, <laughs> I don't know and why they didn't do it sooner. And Infinity War talks about that ice cream named after him that's a bit too chalky. It's literally made of chalk and clogs his throat. Those Russo brothers are crafty motherfuckers. And, and, and it was cameoed in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse where they talked about ice cream. Man, this really is connected. And in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Ant-Man was going to go take his daughter to get some ice cream. Wait, someone actually watched that movie? Shit. But that's <laughs> just a film theory. Wait, so is Sonic Unleashed in the MCU? <laughs> that fucking sound effect, man. That fucking cheap-ass generic reject. stock. The, fucking the red, li red litter media glass shatter and sound effect. It is, again... I'm sure we said this on some of the other parts, but the like basic sound design is probably one of, if not the weakest aspect of this game. Yeah, yeah, they probably got it off the Unity Asset Store. I mean, really, the only good ones are just the ones that have been in the series for fucking ever. Like, yeah, the Life Up sound effect is pretty okay, but when has it been bad? I don't know. I don't know why, but something about the ring sound effect in this game I really like. It just it has it has like some sort of pop that like really uh, comes out. Just the da ding. Yeah, uh, I like the the metal noise or the sound effect for getting the metals. Switch that around. Mhm. Mm it's a good change. There's some there's some HD sound effects in this game. <laughs> for the most part, it's like, well, what did Google give us? No one will probably sue us if we just steal these, right? Okay, good. It's the way I do sound effects. So props to Sonic Team. I mean, it's, it's the entire foundation of YouTube entertainment. I love True. the random doorbells. Yeah, the doorbells are good. They just went to the front office and were like, all right, set up Audacity. <laughs> <On the counter three. laughs> it's like, so we need we need a way to have them just push the button and just push a lot. We want them to feel good about it. So what buttons make you feel good? Yes, you, new intern in the back. Doorbell! <laughs> Fuck I it. like it when the mail comes to my house. Dude. <laughs> the doorbell. Perfect. You're hired. Do it. I love, I love that in this and movie that... that Sega uses audacity. And that's how YouTubers use. get hired at Sega. Can't wait for us to get to go to Japan, guys. <laughs> uh, and immediately get banned. No, you ha you have to make uh like two hundred uh different LP videos about why Sonic sucks. Oh, well, so, we're so, halfway there. So that we can get invited to talk about it. Ah, yes, yes, this. That that's so stupid that that's how right, it fucking works. <laughs> one of the least exciting stages of the game. I'm gonna go completely off topic here. What is your guys' hot take on YouTubers with monetized videos slapping game music from unrelated games as background music? For their videos. Oh. Should that be allowed? Is that like bad? Because I see so many people get away with it, and I'm always like, should I do it? Can we do it? I mean, I mean, it 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 depends on the topic and what the actual uh, like game thing is. Like I know sometimes my, the scenario I'm thinking of. Then I'm on camera, right? It's me, your boy Mikinus fan, and I'm doing a wacky, goofy skit. I'm having some goofs and guffaws. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I like, I comment, I subscribe. You, you're part of the Mikonos fam, got it. 
and all of a sudden, <laughs> Click Clock Woods starts playing in the background. I'm not talking about Banjo Kazooie. Nothing is going on with Banjo Kazooie. I'm just like, this sounds wacky, and I am a wacky boy on YouTube.com. Here is the music I stole, and now I'm getting money from. Are you wait? So, is this a video that you're like talking over the music, or is it just the music okay, playing? No, I, I know what he's. I know this what he's talking about. Chris, yeah, I mean, like, like Chris. You, I'm just gonna say, man, you really didn't have to call out Jontron like that. That was kind of wow. Cool. He deserves it. <laughs> he does. <laughs> you know what? He's so, actually not who I was thinking of, but he's also a great example of that. So, but, but so, so I, I get exactly what you're saying, and I guess it's a thing where, um, so, but if, if if say you were talking about Banjo Kazooie, then to you, there there there'll be no issue with with using music from said game. Yeah. Uh, right, and in this scenario, I'm saying, how do you guys feel when it, like, it's just, I'm not ever going to mention the Banjo-Kazooie in the video, is, for example. Gotcha, gotcha. Is, um, is the ethical dilemma know, here the, the monetization or the unrelatedness of the music? Like, uh, More like profiting off of something I had no involvement in or permission uh, to use. Because it's, I see that all the time. Okay. How long is the yeah. music playing for? Yeah, um, I think that's that's the main thing because yeah. I know a lot of times they're they're in the background, so you can't really hear it that clearly, and it's maybe for twenty seconds max. So yeah, I don't think it's fun. that big of a problem. And, and another thing too is if you're talking over it and it's like accompanying you, it, it's not that would be like different like than you know uploading just the song because I, it's not really in a legal sense, but I guess in a philosophical sense, it's transitive. Like you're changing the purpose of the music. It's someone's not watching that video, obviously, to hear the music. You're talking over it. You're completely. I, I feel like that'd be a little different because it, it's sort of mm -hmm. like how you change like video footage or audio files. They can be changed and mixed into a different format and put into a video, and it's transitive enough. Um, I I think I think the the weird thing about video game music which in, in some ways it, it's kind of maybe similar to like a a movie score where it's like obviously like if, if I was to, if I was to just take say fucking the, the, Beyonce yeah Beyonce if, if, if I was to, if, if I was to take the latest Beyonce track and slap it on um, a video aside from the you know her legion of, of crazily obsessed people attacking the comment section I think because because that type of music it it's designed expressly for commercial use. That's different than something like like uh, like a video game music. It, it it's it's made you know to accompany action on screen. Same with a movie score. And I I, I know that um, uh, you know uh, movie studios and game companies have started including in their kind of like legal bits at the end like the soundtrack is it's listed as a as a separate thing and i know for at least you know big budget movies and and you know uh, decently successful video games the music will be released on its own or put up on a streaming service um you know chris you actually raise a a good point because i i, I honestly like i get i i feel I like mean, in a purely ethical world Everyone who wanted, like, oh, I want this banjo kazooie song in my review of whatever thing. In a perfect world, people would be able to, you know, create their own track that's inspired by instead of actually using that track. But it's mm -hmm. it's a hard internet out there. I mean, I, yeah. But but at the same time, we should value people's. We should value people's art. And then, like, I don't know. You think that you ask the big questions here, Chris? I guess just to say for the record, my stance is it should be okay. Like, I'm not against it personally. I'm just always wondering, like, if I were to do this, would I get, like, Grant Kirkhope messaging me being like, you stole my fucking music, you asshole. I mean, it's more I likely if, that if, the YouTube algorithm would be fucking with you. Yeah. But... <laughs> I mean, it's it's specifically with Grant Kirkhope, I think if he didn't if he didn't uh, chew out uh, Jontron when he when he guessed it on Game Grumps for, you know, John, Jontron literally has probably made a shitload of money on videos that use his footage. I don't oh, use his video, his music. Um, I don't see Cop Cop directly being. Uh, weird. I get it, it, it's it's weird because you know, like companies like like say Sega, seem to have a pretty lax view of of um, you know YouTube videos using their IP and content. I think really, well, really at the end of the day, it is literally what the um, license holder says. So say if Sega came out and said, you know, like uh, Sonic fans are free to use. Our music in in any way for for their for their videos, 
have at it, you know, would be one thing, you know, and then if Sega came out and said, you can't use our video, especially you can't, you can't monetize anything with our music in, then, well, for one, this channel would shut down completely, but then, like, <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a thing, where, I guess, it, goodbye, everybody, <laughs> that's, that's really where I would stand on the subject, it's just, you know, you would have to really go to the license holder, which, which most, in terms of video game music, that's almost, from what I understand, that's almost never the actual composer. Yeah. yeah. And and like you mentioned, it's not like yeah, you're not like you're playing the music like to, like to show it off. It's more it's mostly like ambience or background music. Like for the most part, in all those videos that you're talking about, when they have like unrelated music playing in the background, it's usually just because they need music in the background. Like me, like like something happy, something cheery, something yeah, exciting. Just like yeah, like yeah, put, yeah like like you said, like, like you said, like say you're sitting at the thing talking about, and you have click clock wood like playing in the background. But usually the intro is like twenty seconds. You can only like barely hear the music, and then you go on to your topic. So then the appropriate music starts. So yeah, like, it's like really. I mean, if people have a complaint about it, that's being really pedantic and really. Like just kind of like bitter for no reason. Hmm. I feel like it was an interesting topic when it first came up years ago. Then it kind of just became this like elephant in a room. No one's really addressing. Not that I think it needs addressed. I'm just every time I see it, I'm always like, man, like who's going to be the first company you know to just like drop the mic and be like, yeah, no, you can't do this anymore with our music. And our other people, our other companies, going to follow suit after that because it's like, oh. Someone took the first step. Now let's get in on it too. Yeah, no, it's. A, it's I think that's a really key point because we're kind of at the point where it's only a matter of time until this really becomes a much larger issue in the courts, and there are going to be some legal precedents that are going to be set one way or another sometime in the near future. I mean, the laws have already drastically changed the way internet service works, <laughs> and they fumbled that perfectly well. So yeah, no, yeah, the, it doesn't court, the court cases are, are here for. to come. <laughs> like this is this is the time for those to start occurring. Yeah, I'd like to see it never happen, of course. But, but I'm just, I just think it'd be really interesting if it does happen, not in like a positive way, but just a, huh, wonder how that would go kind of way. Yeah. Morbid curiosity. So what I'm saying is FTCR. Official announcement next week. We're streaming Lo Fi Sonic Beats to Chill and Study 2. So hey. tune into our live stream, donate some money. Although the only the only plus side <laughs> to that happening was it would shut down most of the really generic, boring YouTube uh, like game reviewers. Yeah, like Mikinus fan. God, I hate that guy. Fucker. What is up, gamers? Oh shit, Tails Channel's here. It's your Back boy. No, that's not Tails Channel. They didn't ask us what's for lunch. Well, hey, gamers. Now. What what's for brunch? The way, no, we no. See, day. you you are referencing good friend Matthew Memeheimer. He was no longer part of Tales Channel, so your ruse is incorrect. He came back for a day. It's wow. Okay, okay no. Garrett, it, it's one thing to know about the <laughs> lore about these games. It's another thing to know about the lore about the people who know about the lore about this game. <laughs> That's what really have, have you looked into the lore of FTCR? It's some pretty deep shit. It involves some people leaving, some people coming back, some people leaving yeah, again. Yeah, you know what I fucking call that? Drama. Hey, Keep it to yourself. No, wait, wait. Who, who, no, who left and came back in a TCL? Um, I don't know. I'm just I'm just guess. I'm assuming. My they dignity didn't. left, but it never came back. <laughs> mm, I miss him. Chris was a better man be before. Yeah, true. I can't miss what I never had. So, Axon, uh, you get your money's worth? Please speak more. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I can <laughs> Sorry. Another Sorry. Topic if you want. I tend to adhere to the principle of, you know, if you don't have anything, you know, insightful to say, I, um, you know, I, I just try to remain silent until I have, you know, something that I feel might add to the discussion. But Jesus, if we went with that, nope. all our videos would be silent. No, no. If only the internet was more like you. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do it personally. But if only the internet was more likely. I wouldn't want to hate myself every time I go on there. So you know, so here's here's the thing. Then you know, everyone everyone and their fucking mother has gone on long you know diatribes about this game and all the uh, shit there within. So I think a big a big thing that gets brought up a lot currently is a PC port of Unleashed. Mm. But mm. I think since um, the oh, great... I the mods. Well, well, it, it, did we... they had on oh, no, a generation had the mod? Sorry, I was like. What about that? Yes, thing? somebody there was the there, Unleashed project. The Unleashed project was somebody. Were, people were remaking the Unleashed day stages inside generations. From what I, I, from I, what I understand, they from were what nice. I understand, very successful. People loved it. I have not tried it out myself, and 
By the way, <laughs> shout out to that box for they, just bouncing they, right back. They use they use the uh, the the city escape truck for um, what is the island? Adabat for Adabat. Adabat, yeah. So. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that was what was chasing instead of the robots. Yeah. That was great. That's amazing. One, oh. one mod I would be really interested in seeing is a mod of the uh, Werehog and turning it into essentially a 3D Rice Star game, or is it pronounced Rice Star? I've never known, but you know what yeah, game I'm talking thing. about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah with yeah. the little the little star guy for the Genesis or Mega Drive. Well, I mean, I like that. Well, I think one thing it's it's I bring it up because obviously you know a few years ago there was. Um, when Sega really first started taking steps towards kind of improving the image of, of the franchise, they started delisting games that had bad Metacritic scores, and unfortunately, Unleashed was one of them. So I think that that might be a thing, because I think even though Sega know there's there's clearly some fan demand for like this to be ported, um, I'm not sure if, you know, for their image, if it would, but also if, you know, when, when Lost World was ported from Wii U to the PC, they did things like they completely removed the uh, flicky requirements for progression, which really wasn't in terms of Lost mm. World was they were pretty easy to to get past. But I think one of one thing that people always talk about for like were least to be ported or like re release or what have you, is to get rid of the kind of uh, metal progression Where system. Oh. Whoa, Whoa. Well, see, <laughs> the thing is, the not thing an is, amputation, like people, just 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 a removal. It's like people. People joke about removing the werehog, but like you really, you really can't for how mess of reasons. The game would oh, yeah. not it, be it unleashed. It is a significant part of the game, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, um, but would you know? I th- from, from you know, from what I can only assume based on with Lost World, removing the uh, metal uh, handicap would could you know probably be a a way to draw people back in because you know I've I've read so many c- people who like. I've you know tried tried to get to X level, can't find enough medals. I hate this game now. I, I no longer want to play it. I think um, I think we're moving the the level, the kind of uh, brick wall of the medals for progression would actually make a lot of people either, either come back or maybe just enjoy the game more. I agree. Yeah. As as far as I've saw, and then the weird thing is that most of my experience uh, with the game noticing is that it isn't until you get to Adabat where the uh, where the medals become a problem. Because for the most part, when you're playing the game, you're able to get enough medals that you can get through like most of the levels pretty much fine. But then once you get to Adabat, and it's like you need 120 sun medals, like it suddenly jumps immediately, and then that becomes the problem. So it's like it doesn't really it's not really a problem for so long of the game, and then suddenly at the end, it's like yeah, you need this much. So I think that 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 also doesn't help problems. I wonder if they could just make the requirements super easy, if nothing else. Yeah. If they couldn't like remove it, it for whatever technical reason. Lacks it, but yeah, yeah, no. The metals are certainly one thing they could change, but if there was one thing they could change about the Werehog, you know, some sort of actionable change, you know, something that's actually feasible without fundamentally fundamentally uh, redesigning it, what change would you guys make if you were in that uh, position? Uh, make uh, one thing I'd actually good question. One thing I'd, 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 one thing I'd actually do for the entire game is just, especially if it was re- if it was released now on on modern hardware, is just make the frame rate consistent throughout the entire game. Also, obligatory music comment because that was going to come up. Also, I didn't do this clock right. Look at this go. This is dumb. This is really stupid of me. Rip. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! We see your now. Shame you're going to get a bad here, rank. Chris. Oh man! You could have gotten, gotten an S points. Could have gotten an S rank. I, I, I want to ask because I, th- I don't. I think th- this is probably the most boring of all the uh, Werehog stages. How just cause it dare feel- you? Just because it feels like it drags on the longest. <laughs> I want to ask if if you don't think this is the what, what do you think is the weakest a Werehog I stage? Don't, I don't even remember what they all are, so I don't know. This or um, Arid Sands, and I'd say <laughs> Sands. I'd also say <laughs> um, to Action's question, um, I'd make more Werehog combos available earlier on instead of just starting with four or five. <laughs> I, I, if I, I don't have mind. like one really easy change. I don't mind Arid Sands because that one feels like shorter than some of the others. I think it's just it is if you if you go into that one spot where you get some goodies, then it's like then it ends up dragging out a lot more. But if you're just playing it normally, it's just it's like medium size length. 
I just always feel like I'm on that four puzzle area mm-hmm. forever in that city. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, the, the one with the four keys. Buckles. Yeah, there's four little diamond ruby yeah. objects, and you gotta Gosh, go over. That I is, always feel like I'm there way longer. Yeah, that is be. that is such a monotonous section. So maybe that stage is quicker, and, and <laughs> it just seems worse due to that. To, to be fair, even though the clock tower gives me like amazing Great Mouse Detective vibes, I, actually <laughs> playing it, not really fun. Like, I, uh, so I, it's, I'm so glad I can actually just. The watch outside kind of looks it. like. The outside kind of looks like uh, Peter Pan. Yeah, that too. You can fight the Phantom. I compare it to Sonic Team's magnum opus, Night's Journey of Dreams for the Nintendo Wii. I thought you were going to say Clockwork Night. C- Clockwork Night for the Nintendo Wii. No, go back to talking about Nights. We got the uncanny camera. What a dumb thing. Anyway, we quit. One, two, three. <laughs>